this is Seymour okay, this is Seymour one. This takes place in this classroom modern day. Okay. Hello class. I would like to start today's lecture with a poem. In West Philadelphia, on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing all the cool, and shooting some deep e ball as early 90s lingo for basketball. <laughs> Outside of the school, when a couple of guys, they were up to no good, started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got in one little fight, and my mom got scared and said, You're moving with your auntie and uncle to Bel Air. I pulled up to a house about seven or eight, and I yelled to the cabbie, Your homes, smell you later. <laughs> Looked at my kingdom, I was finally there to sit on my throne as the Prince of Bel Air. Now, today we will be discussing Chapter 5 of my book, Twilight of the Gods. I've made a prezi demonstration to uh, demonstrate 2nd Isaiah's total lack of understanding of the worship practices of his time. Let us begin. What did you just say? <laughs> Who are you? I'm the writer of 2nd Isaiah. My name is Ben. I'm here to take you back into the past. What? No time to explain. Where, but when? We're in the 6th century BC. What's that? That's one of those craftsmen I talk about in my writings. Half of, the, half of the wood he burns in the fire, over it he prepares his meal. He roasts his meat and eats his fill. He also warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm, I see the fire. For the rest he makes it a god, his idol. He bows down to it and worships. He prays and says, Save me, you are my god. They know nothing, they understand nothing. Their eyes are plastered over so they cannot see, and their minds closed so they cannot understand. No one stops to think. No one has knowledge or understanding to say. Half of it I use for fuel. Even I baked bread over its coals. I roasted meat and I ate. Shall I make a detestable thing from what is left? Shall I bow down to it and make it a block of wood? Oh, Ben, you are mistaken. I described my book, Twilight of the Gods, as the pedestal provides access to the gods. It connects worship to the deity and serves as a means to communicate. Oh, perhaps that is what some claim. And maybe a small group believe that. But what others have written is the reason that not always have followed. And that many believe that idol worships, worshippers did believe the gods were in idols. Well, what's wrong with that? It's outrageous to think that the divine can be stored in the craftsman's work. To say that implies the craftsman's ability to turn wood into an object that is power, powerful enough to hold the gods themselves. A reversal of Genesis, where God made the man in his image, now makes man, now, now man makes God in his image. But you used the ark as a sort of idol. At the Battle of Ebenezer, you thought you lost because you didn't bring the ark with you and the Lord wasn't with you. Dr. Pinchansky, I'm using satire. What's that, Ben? A literary composition, in a verse of prose, in which human folly and vice are held upon to scorn, direct derision or ridicule. So? So you are right. At the times, Israelites did see the ark as not a sign of covenant, but as then an idol. But remember, they lost their battle in the ark even when they brought the ark with them. I'm using satire only to ridicule, not only to ridicule, but also as also to deter 
with my fellow Israelites from following the same practices they had done before when imitating neighboring religions. Your words speak to my heart as clearly as an any text in Paul. Of course, my friend, for I am God-fearing, peace-loving man of the people. You truly are, Ben. You truly are. Now I must go. So soon? There are many others I need to teach. <laughs> Was that all just a dream? Thank <laughs> you.